What's up guys, my name is Captain Stillwater and welcome to SPL in Review Day 5. We only had one game Day 5 and that was between, oh god I hit my microphone, I am so sorry. We only had one game Day 5 and that was between Fnatic playing once again and they were going up against Paradigm. So let's just jump on into it, we have match set statistics for both Game 1 and Game 2. Oh, I am far less enthusiastic because this is my, oh gosh, hitting my desk. Because this is the second time I'm recording this. Because, you know, my my mic wasn't registering, apparently. And so, you know, I have a beautiful video with no audio over it. Which is fantastic. So I'm going to try and be a little bit quicker this time around, considering I've already talked about all of this. And I uh, don't really want to go through it again. But here we go. Uh, we had Zyros on Chiron, Reels on Soul, Maniac on Athena, Jiffy on Thor, Big Man Tings on Ares... For Paradigm, we had Lobster on, or for, yeah, Lobster on Raw, Funballer on Kronos, Zelia on Vimana, Cubo Fred on Odin, and Trix Tank on Bacchus. I'm just going to draw your attention to this column right here, where you might see something that's kind of questionably uh, concerning. It's like, wait, Jason, why don't they have any kills? Because they got shut out. Because <laughs> Fnatic got absolutely destroyed game one. So we're going to start with Fnatic. Uh, Zyros is Chiron. Um, he had little pressure, but overall he played well, uh, especially considering his team. His damage output was fine. Uh, we'll get into this more as we analyze the game as a whole rather than single player contribution. Reels' his soul was kept from rotating by Funballer. He was locked in lane, couldn't rotate to the team fights, and I think that was a big issue as to why they had a hard time earlier on in terms of like these mid mid game fights where uh, Reels needed to rotate and just couldn't. He put out good damage considering. Um, he was also not an issue in terms of my eyes as to the whole team. We had Maniac on Athena. <sighs> he had minimal follow-up in my eyes and minimal presence, especially given the fact that he had a global ultimate and teleport to towers. He should have been able to rotate more often, maybe try something earlier on, given that you have this mobility and that Vamana... Zalia's Vamana doesn't have the ability to rotate. I would have liked to see Fnatic try and use the double globals they have right here to try and apply more pressure throughout the map. Jiffy's Thor was caught out, and I don't want to say a number of times because he only died twice, but he was caught out and, and forced out a couple times, and there was one huge play where Zalia caught him out, forced him to ult out because he caught his hammer da he caught his hammer teleport with his pop-up. Um, and so Jiffy was forced to ult, which then led to Paradigm forcing a Gold Fury fight in which they went four for nothing in kills. Um, and that was kind of like the big swing of the game. That was like, oh, Paradigm is Paradigm has a huge lead and Fnatic is far behind and having a rough time. And then Big Man Tings on areas, I think this was the biggest issue with Fnatic's lineup and the reason they had a hard time for the most part. I think Maniac and Jiffy could have had more pressure on the map. Um, but Big Man Tings is Ares. No pressure at all. He went 0-4. Didn't even make it to 2,500 damage. <sighs> and that's the problem with Ares. If he gets behind at all, he immediately becomes useless. Um, I honestly did not see him... His ult was kind of ineffective because he was behind. The minute he ulted, people would just try and focus him and kill him before his ult even went off. Um, but I would have liked to see him hit more chains. I really didn't see him hitting the chains. Uh, it would have stopped Zalia from popping people up. Cubo Fred from putting out, honestly, literally all of his damage is reliant on the bird bomb, and you can't bird bomb if you are chained. And then Trix Tank's initiation would have been completely nullified if Big Man Tings had chained him as well. Uh, so I would have liked to see him put out more pressure. I think this was the issue. I think this is the biggest issue. I don't think it was the only issue. Uh, they, they, they didn't play like they were on the same page. The team didn't really work out too well. Uh, jumping now to Paradigm, we have Raw's Lobster. I'm not the biggest proponent of Raw at the moment. I do think he's good, but I think he lacks right here in the damage area because his damage is not guaranteed. It's very, especially his ultimate, you have to have sets for his ultimate. Now they have Funballer's Time Stop, Salia's Pop Up, and Trix Tank's Pop Up to guarantee Lobster's ult. Uh, I don't really know if that happened too much during the fight. He did play a solid mid game play, though, or mid lane play rather than mid game, mid lane play. Um, he just, all around, it was a solid play, solid pick. It worked out well. 
Uh, I still think there are better picks, but, you know, it is what it is. Interesting pick going Breastplate of Valor. Probably just because his pressure was coming from Zyros and Jiffy. I mean, they were four-man magical, too, so that's even... Or not four-man magical, three-man magical, which is a little bit more interesting as to as to the Breastplate of Valor versus maybe the Imperial Helmet. Um, and then just kind of going into the rest of his build, depending on what it was. Fun Ballers Kronos, like I said before, he really held reels in lane and prevented him from rotating a lot. Uh, he played a solid game, hitting time stops. Uh, he, he started feeling himself towards the end of the game, which we'll get into game two because it definitely came out. Uh, but he played well overall. Zelia, uh, Zelia was a huge point of this game. You can tell just by this. He put out 13.5k damage. No one was even remotely close to him. He got ahead early because he was laning against Maniacs Athena, and Athena can't really stand in lane against a Vamana. Whoops, move my mouse. Um, and so his rotations were clutch. Like I said, he caught Jiffy out in the jungle that time and really forced the big fight at Gold, F which allowed them to force the fight at Gold Fury. Uh, he went with an interesting build. It's a lot of it's defense, defense, steals, defense, defense, uh, attack speed, movement speed. This is his main source of power, but it gives you 50. This gives you 15. So it's 65 power plus Fatalis. He was a pretty tanky kid, and he harassed the crap out of everyone. He played very well. Uh, Kivo Fred's Odin. Um, coming out as a good anti-Athena and a good cager. Uh, only Maniac can ult out. Soul can get out through her corporeal form. Uh, and Jiffy can hammer Telly out if he doesn't get knocked up out of his hammer telly, which happened quite a bit that game, uh, but the rest of the team can't get out. Um, honestly, it seemed like more of an anti-Athena, keeping Maniac locked down, keeping preventing him from getting to the back lines, and harassing Lobster and Funballer. Uh, and then Trix Tang came out on Bacchus. He had really good initiations, good damage because he's Bacchus. Uh, and overall, this paradigm played extremely well. Fnatic surrendered at 22 minutes, ladies and gentlemen. 22 minutes. They were shut out. It was a rough game for Fnatic Game 1, so let's jump on over to Game 2, where Fnatic put up a significantly better fight. Fnatic came out with Zyros on Giannis, Reels on Soul, Maniac on Tyr, Jiffy on Kali, and Big Man Tings on Athena. Paradigm came out with Lobster on New Wall, Funballer back on Kronos, Zaley on Bologna, Cubo Fred back on as Odin, and Trix Tank on Guan Yu. And I'm going to put a star, an imaginary star here. I'm not actually going to put a star. Imaginary star right here because this was the pick that determined the game, in my eyes at least. Um, so Zyros' Giannis played extremely well. He had one death, and this death occurred in the Titan push in the last 20 seconds of the game. So essentially he was 4-0 and 5 in my eyes. Uh, put out a huge amount of damage. Mind you, this game went... Oh, gosh. My computer's dying. ha -pa. There we go. Um, mind you, this game went like 53, 59 minutes, something like that, as you can probably tell by builds. I mean, look at Reels' build. Rada Tahuti, Obi Shard, Spear of Deso, uh, Pen Boots, uh, Doom Orb, and Soul Reaver. Stupid amount of damage, stupid expensive builds, uh, just because they had the ability to afford them. Um... But back to Giannis, great pick. He played really well, portaling his team in and out. Um, he also had the hot steal on that gold fury. What? Uh, Paradigm showed their weaknesses in game two, and mainly that their objective play is really poor. Um, they have a lot of work to do on their objective play. I think it was just because game one, maybe they were feeling themselves. They didn't feel like Fnatic was really an issue, but game two, they showed a lot of... A lot of mistakes around objective play, and I think that's where teams are going to be able to capitalize on Paradigm at the moment. Um, so Giannis, overall, focal point of the team. He kept his team in it for a long, long time and really helped his team all around. Reels' is soul um, played really well, put out a poop ton of damage, um, was able to rotate game two. I, there's not really much else to say. He played well. He put out he put out his damage as he needed to. He wasn't really caught out. Uh, Maniac's tier. Um, he had some really big fearless combos, and and that was great and all. But it seemed like he was tanking a little too much. 
uh, to try and get his fearless combos off. Like he would be like running into a tower, taking like a significant number of tower shots before he was able to get his fearless off and actually hit the somebody he wanted to hit. Uh, in my eyes, it was a little weak in that sense. He was one of two people to buy anti-healing, but he bought it in Pestilence. So the anti-healing's not irrelevant, but very minimal. Uh, and then Jiffy's Kali, you know, the hyper carry Kali, we saw it on Cyclone Spin come out and be huge. Jiffy really needed to come online this game. And the big issue here was he couldn't find kills. He played well. And late game, he was forcing ults and beads and sanctuaries left and right because everybody was terrified of him because he's Kali. But he just couldn't get the kills. He couldn't get the last hits. People were surviving with next to no health, and he was having to jump out because his ultimate was ending, and this was mainly due to Trix Tank. Uh, big Man Tank coming out on Athena. I want to just draw attention to this right here. He was level 19 still in a game that went, you know, 50-plus minutes. That shouldn't be the case. As well, he was only involved in 11 instances of kills. Uh, so he barely got his Urchin stacked, which he bought second item. So it's kind of an issue. Uh, but overall, he played well. He had a really good... He had, like, really good sets during the mid game and in mid lane. Uh, he just... I don't know. He just had good sets. And then late game, he was doing what he needed to do. Burn relics, forcing people to beads. Funballer was playing really, really aggressive. And Big Man Tinks was just forcing him to have to beads and then run away, which would cause Funballer to have to sit back in the team fights, which was a big issue for Paradigm. Jumping down to Paradigm, Lobster coming out doing 39.3k damage in a 50-plus minute game. Nuwa, you know, puts on the hurt with the fire shards raining down with that much damage behind them they could swing fights uh he played really well um and he had really really just his main contribution was just his damage output he was caught out a little bit but not much he played really well considering uh peel for him wasn't really a thing until cubo fred started defensively ulting and tricks tank focused on keeping people alive fun baller he played well, but he played way too over-aggressive late game, getting caught out a lot. You can see that in his slash line and his damage. He should have probably had more damage than that, but he couldn't get into the fights a lot because he'd be over-aggressing um, during like the warding phase where like you're fighting for vision control over an objective, and he would get caught out by Big Man Tings or by Jiffy or by Maniac, and he'd have to beads and he'd have to run away, and then he wouldn't be able to be in the fights because he his beads were down and he would just get focused out so big issues there <sighs> but with that said he had some amazingly lucky and good resets like we're talking his resets would go off and he'd have like 10 health left like 10 actually like actually 10 hp like it was ridiculous this man dodged death more times than he should have uh Zelia's Bologna um comboed really well with Odin and Guan Yu. This is, I'm really going to talk about all three of these guys at the same time because they were just kind of one unit. They they fought and rotated and did everything as a unit. Um, I questioned the Nami and Lion pickup. It was mostly, it was, okay, it was entirely for Jiffy, like Maniac's basic attacks aren't going to do much. Reels is whatever. <laughs> He's really focusing on the Stellar Burst at that point. Uh, Zyros is just shotgunning big man tanks. Like, this is mainly for Kali, and I don't know if it was the best pickup for Kali. I think Midguardian Mail might have been a little bit stronger. Uh, considering he's running Fatalis, but he's not... You have the ability to slow him, and he does not have the ability to get out of that slow. Um, so, maybe not in the mean line, but I don't... It's not the worst pickup. It's really not that bad in my eyes. He went 6, 1, and 12. He was a good finish for a lot of the kills Funballer couldn't couldn't end, and Lobster didn't have Fire Shards active for. His ultimate was used very well most of the game, generally offensively. Uh, Cubo Fred, whew. Uh, he was a great anti-Athena this game, really locking Big Man Tings down. I think that's why you saw Big Man Tings go 0-5 and, and not make it to level 20, is he was constantly getting Odin ringed, and he'd have to ult out, and then... That's kind of them forcing the Athena ult for nothing because Odin's ult comes back every every 30 seconds at the end of the game, which is kind of stupid. Um, overall, just good play. 
comboing with Zelia and Trix Tank really well, and then Trix Tank's Guan Yu, I think, was the determining factor. Fnatic had a really late game team. Giannis, Reels, Maniac, Jiffy. They're all... I mean, Jiffy's Kali is hyper carry late game. Soul, stupid damage late game. Zyros, stupid damage late game. Maniac should be unkillable and yet still doing a stupid amount of damage late game as well. Um, and so late game, their team, much better. Cuba Fred should fall off outside of his ult. Guan Yu as well, uh, outside of his healing, usually not very effective. Bologna is decently effective. Fun Ballers, Kronos is hugely effective. And Nuwa is really effective in that she has a poop ton of damage. But uh, usually people can take advantage of Nuwa late game just because if you can get past her clay minions, uh, all of her safety falls off uh, she has to fire shards to stay alive and then after that's done that's that's usually it uh, but we really didn't see that like I said Jiffy just couldn't find kills late game and I think that was due to Trix Tank he had meditation and using his conviction really really well he kept people alive for <laughs> indefinitely like people people were getting out with no health and they were constantly being able to reinitiate, whereas Fnatic would have to back and then run back to the fights. Uh, granted, you have Athena, but like the Athena, like I said, was being burned, so Big Man Tings wasn't being able to ult back into fights usually. Maniac, he had Teleport, but you can only use that in theory once during a team fight, just because the cooldown's so long. You have the Through Space and Time, which, by the way, coming out with the hot snipes, the hottest of snipes on these two kids right here. <laughs> uh, he hit some. He had some amazing snipes that game. I think it was, you know, mostly luck, but props to him. Props to him. Uh, but like I said, Guan Yu, he was just too strong. And the only anti-healing was this Pestilence and this Brawler's Beat Stick. And so Kali, Jiffy was going in with Kali, and he couldn't finish the kills, and he even had the anti-healing. But it's, I don't think it's his fault. Like, we should have seen a Weakening Curse. We may, We probably should have seen a Divine Ruin come out. Like, Where's the anti-healing? Like, Guan Yu was the problem. Like, he was just keeping people alive. He healed a stupid... I remember the... Uh, I forget who was announcing. I think it was Hindu Man and Adonis this game. And they were constantly going back and looking at player uh, player healing because Trick Tank's healing was, like, enormous. He essentially negated... I'm, I'm pretty sure at the end of this game, he did approximately this much player healing. So essentially... The way you should look at it is Maniac did no damage. And not not like against Maniac being like, oh, no, Maniac, you know, you didn't perform well. Like, no, 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 no. Like, in terms of their damage output, you can essentially negate all of the damage Maniac did. That's a huge deal because Big Man Ting's not doing very much damage. Jiffy didn't even get that much damage out just because he was getting blown up and he had to constantly leave. These two kids put out a ton of damage, but then, like, that's a lot of damage to just have have healed away that you couldn't you couldn't stop that healing like we really needed to see a weakening curse on someone probably a divine ruin somewhere we needed to see more uh we needed to just see them lock tricks tank down like get rid of his healing it was too strong i honestly think he's the reason they won fanatic had the late game had the late game prowess paradigm gave up Gold Fury won. They let Zyros walk in, steal it, walk away. Paradigm. Over aggressive to Fire Giant. Guess what happens? Fnatic win that fight, and they get Fire Giant. They had Gold Fury won, Fire Giant won. They should have won this game. They should have won this game. They had a more late game oriented team. They just couldn't lock this team down. And I think the main reason was at the end of the game, Cubo Fred was ulting defensively. He was ulting, like, literally on cooldown defensively, peeling for Lobster and Fun Baller. Zelia, really good sets with the Bologna ult, finishing kills, was a nuisance. Trix Tank kept his team alive indefinitely. He needed to be locked down. If the Guan Yu healing was negated, I think Fnatic would have had a much easier time and they probably would have won this game. With that said, Paradigm go 2-0 over Fnatic in Day 5 of the SPL. <sighs> Whew. And that's that. This is the third time I think I've recorded this video just because I accidentally screwed up the first two times. But yeah, uh, now that we're done with that, here's your week two schedule, or the majority of it. There's actually like a couple more days after here. Um, but tomorrow, granted I'm uploading day three, four, and five super late. I apologize for that. 
But tomorrow, we have Randozos versus Enemy, Denial versus Allegiance, and Sore versus Envy. So, my predictions for tomorrow, exclusively tomorrow, I'm not going to do the rest of week two at the moment. I might just release a SPL predictions video on that in the future, for future weeks. I don't know if I'm going to do it for week two right now. I'm kind of busy at the moment, but... Like I was saying, Randozos versus Enemy. I think Enemy's going to 2-0 Randozos. I think they came out and showed themselves to be really strong in uh, week one, going up against Luminosity. Um, and I think Randozos have their problems, but I do think Randozos are getting better. They're showing progress. And we'll see how they perform throughout the remainder of the spring split, I expect. I expect Enemy to be a really interesting topic because they played really well in the start. But I want to see if they're going to be able to hold that up, especially as teams find their niches and find their picks, and find their their coordinations and their plays, and the teams with um, more experienced players might, you know, surface to the top. Uh, so we'll have to see how enemy plays, but I expect them to 2-0 Randozos. Denial versus Allegiance. Allegiance came out and underperformed in their game against Eager. Um... I expected more of a showing from them. They looked much weaker than they did during relegations. Denial, however, came out and looked pretty strong. But this one's tough for me. I'm leaning more towards split. It's either Denial 2-0-ing Allegiance or a split. That's what I'm assuming. If I mean, if Allegiance 2 owes them, then I guess I know nothing about this freaking league. But <clears throat> I just, I don't know. I don't see Allegiance coming out and 2 owing Denial. I am leaning more towards split at the moment. And that gets us to Game 3. Game 3 is going to be really interesting. It's Soar, which is Baskin's team, going up against Envy, which is the um, the team Masked is now on with Hujima Watts, um, Cyclone, Spin, Kiki, Sochiki, Omega, and MLC Stealth. So ah, Soar's going to be good, but I think Envy's going to win this series. I think Envy's going to 2-0 Soar, Maybe it'll be a split, but I'm leaning far more towards Envy because I think they're going to be super strong. A lot of eyes are going to be on this game in my mind because Mast is replacing Eonic, and Eonic played his butt off against Eager. And so it's going to be really interesting because I do think, you know, Eonic and Mast are both very good. Eonic's now the sub. I believe he's officially the sub. We don't actually see him listed here as a sub, so maybe, uh, maybe he's moving, but I doubt it at the moment. <clears throat> um, so Mast is really, he's got shoes to fill already. So it's going to be interesting to see Cyclone Spin being awarded the first pentakill of the SPL already on Kali. Uh, man had like three opportunities for it, so it's going to be interesting. Kiki so Cheeky, generally passive guardian. Omega, arguably, I mean, this is going to be the duel of the solo lane. You're going to see Baskin versus Omega, which is the top two solo laners in North America, at least, competing. And then you got MLC Stealth, one of my favorite players to watch. Um, you saw his new wall play, which was stupid good. I wish I could play new wall like that. Man hits so many basic attacks, it's ridiculous. He uses the passive so well. So I think Envious versus Soar is going to be a really interesting game to watch. So I hope you guys tune in to, the week, to week two's games. If you're not really sure you're going to be able to catch them all, I would lean more towards this game if you're going to watch one just because I think this game is going to be really, really interesting to see these two powerhouse teams come together and see how they play. Um, maybe it won't be. Maybe the other games will be far more interesting. We'll have to wait and see. If you guys enjoyed the video, be sure to like, comment, subscribe, all that fun stuff, and I will see you all next time.